Hi, and welcome to the 5-Minute Business Boost, where you get to choose your 5-Minute Investment. I'm your host, Sam Hicks, and I'll be discussing topics under the headings of business development, marketing, photography, and much more. Why advertise on community radio? So this is the episode today where I'm going to drill deep down into why you should consider community radio. Okay, so number one, they have a targeted local reach. Community radio stations are hyper-local, meaning they broadcast specifically to listeners in your immediate area. This allows you to reach a highly targeted audience, people who live, work and shop in your community. So whether you're promoting a new product, a special event or simply increasing awareness of your business, advertising on community radio ensures that your message is heard by the people most likely to become your customers or even better, referrals. Now, if you're looking for a broad audience, one could argue this is perfect. If you are looking for a highly targeted audience, then this form of advertising may not be for you. But hang in there. Stay with me, people. For many of my clients, we use community radio as brand awareness auto-promote events. And a lot of the times we use it in a multi-faceted campaign. So hang in there, people. Number two, it is cost-effective advertising. One of the most attractive aspects, I think, of community radio advertising is its affordability. Compared to commercial radio or other forms of media like television or print, community radio offers a cost-effective way to reach your target audience. Now, this is particularly beneficial for small businesses with limited marketing budgets. Many community radio stations offer very flexible pricing options including sponsorship packages or pay-per-spot deals, allowing you to tailor your advertising to fit your budget. Now, our local radio stations offer run-of-station or ROS sponsorship messages as single, double slots and triple slots. And they either come as a 20 or 30 second spot. They also offer weather and news tags, so there are a variety of options. Now, this then is broken up to, you know, daily or hourly Um, runs. But I'll go into more detail in a moment as it can get a little tricky to navigate. Okay, number three, strong community connection. Community radio stations are deeply embedded in the local area they serve. They often focus on community events, local news and issues that matter most to local listeners. By advertising on community radio, your business aligns itself with the values and interests of the community. And this not only helps in building trust and credibility, but also can position your business as a key supporter of the local community. So really, it is all about that connection, that conversation and being seen or in this case, being heard locally. Okay, so types of advertising on community radio. Now, every station is slightly different, okay? But this is, I think, a bit of a broad stroke on what types of advertising there are. So number one is sponsored segments or shows. So you could consider sponsoring a program or a show that aligns with your business. For instance, if you run a gardening supply store, sponsoring a gardening tips program could directly target your ideal audience. Now I've just grabbed that out of my head, people, but you can see where I'm going with this. So news tags, program tags or weather updates or tags are commonly used by community radios. But in saying that, sponsored programs or updates can increase your brand visibility and create positive associations with that content that listeners may have just been enjoying for a while or they trust and all those things or they regularly listen each week to that program. Now, it is tricky to get that right fit and I'll talk about that soon in a minute. <clears throat> Number two, on-air promotions and competitions. Now, promotions and competitions are a great way to engage listeners and encourage them to interact with your brand. Offering a prize, and I've seen many events offer free tickets, you know, in return for answering one or two questions. But what this can do is is it can increase those on-air mentions and create a bit of excitement and or interest. It's also an effective method for driving foot traffic to your shop, your socials or your website, or in this case that I've been speaking about, your event. Now, I've done this with businesses and or groups, so clients who are having an event and it does offer a degree of increased exposure. But of course, the key is when your audience may be listening during the day or night, do they listen in their car at their home whilst at work? So think about those as you're running these competitions. 
Now, number three is traditional ads or sports or spots. Now, these are usually short, scripted advertisements that run between programming. They're a tried and true method for conveying a clear, concise message about your business. So when creating that radio ad, focus on a strong call to action, such as inviting listeners to visit your store, check out your website or attend that up and coming event. The key here is to chat to your representative from the radio station, someone who is skilled in not only helping you write the adverts, but suggesting that best placement. So what are my top five tips for creating effective radio ads? Number one, you need to know your audience. Understanding who you're speaking to is crucial. You need to tailor that message to the interests and needs of your local community because really you are speaking directly to their concerns or desire to your potential customers. If you're trying to directly target an audience or if it's purely brand awareness, you can be more general in your messaging. And don't forget, you've got to have a great call to action. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Number two, keep it simple and engaging. Radio ads are typically 30 to seconds long. 30 seconds long. So it's important to keep your message clear and to the point. Use simple engaging language that grabs attention and holds it. Avoid overloading your ad with information. Focus on one key message or offer. This is really important and you'll find the most value if you can come up with a draft script and let the radio sales or marketing rep play around with those words because they've got to flow. They've got to be easily digested and or heard And there is only so many seconds in that 36, 30 to 60 second grab to get people's attention and make some impact. Number three, use a call to action. I spoke about this before. Every ad should have a clear call to action. Whether you want your listeners to visit your store, call a mobile or check out your socials or website, make sure the action that you want them to take is crystal clear. It's all about that customer journey, folks. Number four, be consistent. Consistency is key in advertising. Running your ad constantly over time helps build recognition and keeps your business top of mind with listeners. Consider running a series of ads or maintaining a presence on the station with regular sponsorships or programs. Again, considering your campaign, you need to work with the station to find out the best way forward. And yes, sometimes it is a bit of a trial and test. Number five, consider community radio in a multimedia campaign alongside socials, website and or print media. This way you get to a wider audience, especially with events and new happenings in your business. Now that's all really well and fine, Sam, but how do I get started? Okay, so getting started with community radio advertising. If you're interested in advertising, start by reaching out to your local station. They can provide you with information on their audience, pricing and available advertising options. Most of them will refer you to their website or send you a pretty PDF with all their rates and schedules and programs. And many stations are very eager to work with local businesses and can offer advice on crafting an effective ad campaign. You need to also do a bit of your own homework. Check out their listening area, check out their programs that they offer and their presenters. Over the last 20 odd years, I've got favourite presenters over the years, script readers, and in fact, many radio presenters, now this is a handy tip, can read out an advertisement script really well. And some have those gorgeous voices that, you know, they're radio voices. So I always think about who is going to read the advert. Are they male or female? Are they younger or older? Do we need to have a professional trustworthy tone or an upbeat and casual tone? All of these things you've got to consider when you're crafting your ads. Now, most adverts need to be fully produced advertisements, not necessarily with paid voice actors, but you can do that. And of course, you need the production effects in and around if there's going to be a music background or so forth. So that are all, or those are all options. And yes, there are production costs because they have to produce the advert in-house using the latest equipment. So the advert is crisp and make sure you understand those costs and requirements. I think most local community radios, their production costs are really good value. Um, Now, I remember early on going in and recording an advert myself. Can you imagine? My voice is great for radio interviews and when I'm reading from a script, but not so good for adverts because I slaughter the English language. But it was a great experience for me to understand exactly how I sounded and what was needed in regard to production, pronunciation 
and breathing. As an asthma sufferer, it's fraught with danger. I struggle over winter. You'll hear my podcast where I'm breathing really heavily. And, you know, here we are coming into spring now and I'm going to be sneezing like there's no tomorrow. But this is why I encourage my clients to get a presenter or a voice who is used to recording radio adverts. And most community radios will have a core team of people that they call on to do this. So let's dive a bit deeper into the styles or options. So run of station or ROS sponsorship is an ad, usually 20 or 30 seconds long, that will be randomly played across the station schedule throughout the week. And this ensures a really broad coverage. Your message in some instances will be aired at least 10 or plus times per week with the potential for extra bonus spots, especially if they've got spots that haven't been filled with paid advertisement. <coughs> So a random, oh, sorry, a random, a run of station is a really good option. Now, rates usually fall into single, double or triple slots. So the single slots are usually 20 to 30 seconds, as I said, and are costed out per week. A double slot is aired more frequently. It is the same size, 20 or 30 seconds, and also costed out per week. Now, the triple slot is even more frequent, and it's the same size and costed out per week. So... <clears throat> Sorry for all the repeatings, but that's just how it goes. These are a great option and an ideal for consistent broad exposure over the week, especially if you want to reach that wide audience that we keep talking about and, wor- and not worrying about specific timing. Tags are short pre-recorded messages, usually 10 to 15 seconds, and they're played once every hour during specific programs. These are much briefer. They're focused on mentions of your business. Tags, I think, can be also effective because it's that repetition. Now, these are priced out weekly and can fall into several categories. And remember, every community radio does their own version, has their own schedules and their own names, but this is what I'm used to. So news tag, weather update, program tag, or as in the high country, there are options such as weather tags during snow season. So these are the type of options or categories. So these are great for businesses looking to associate their brand with popular, regular, scheduled segments or programs. You know, like the news or the weather updates where people are likely to tune in. It offers more frequent exposure without the cost of a full ad. Now, most community radios offer package deals and these sometimes can be a real deal breaker. They offer them over three to six and 12 months, which could provide better rates because you're bulk buying in a way and you will often see more frequent airing of your ads. So committing to a longer term package can give you sustained exposure and better, <clears throat> potentially better pricing, maximising your advertising budget over time. And those options provide that flexibility depending on your budget because it's always going to get back to your budget. And of course, the type of exposure you want for your business. R- Random of station is great for consistent broad reach while tags and special sponsored programs offer those more targeted approaches. And the production service is a helpful add-on if you need assistance in creating the effective ads, which I do every time. These guys are the professional. They do it in their sleep. So why would you try to do it? Let them help. So in today's episode, I explain what advertising on local community radio can be as a powerful tool for small businesses in regional Victoria. It has that whole targeted reach or broader reach, which can be a very effective option. And there are strong community connections to be made. And community radio, I think, offers a unique way to engage with local audiences and promote your businesses or business. By leveraging the benefits of community radio, you can increase your visibility, build trust with local customers and ultimately grow your business. And it sort of just ticks around in the background. That's what I like, especially if you take a 12 month campaign. So consider it for your business in the next 12 months and let me know how you get on. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the 5 Minute Business Boost. For more information, follow me on socials, sign up for my newsy, or check out my website to see how we can work together to reach your small business goals. Remember, anything is possible, especially in the northeast of Victoria. Until next time, cheerio.